Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And if you can recognize the picture that's on the screen here, you are looking at uh, Brother Greg Renchen. And uh, he is an am amazing brother that has had a tremendous past. Uh, I actually got introduced to some of his work uh, earlier this year, and I watched quite a few of the videos uh, where Brother Greg speaks about his experiences uh, in the both in the military as well as the private sector that he went into later. And I'm going to ask him in just a moment here to share some of that information with you about his past before we get started. But uh, if there is a person that I have ever heard that we just seem to fit like a hand and a glove together uh, in discussing these demonic entities that are really about to un, un, reveal themselves in a, in a very bizarre way. Uh, this is the brother, I think, and I thank God that he's a, he's a Christian as well, believes Jesus Christ uh, 100%. His wife, uh, what a special woman as well, a real genuine believer too. So, Brother Greg, thank you for being on with us here tonight on Israeli News Live. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to, the, been looking forward to this for a long time. Well, thanks for having me on, number one, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Brother Greg, can you, I have to keep in mind, I'm sure once this airs, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, oh my gosh, I've listened to Brother Greg, I've listened, I've listened to all of his videos. But there's still going to be a bunch of people that are going to say, oh my goodness, I, I never heard of this because this is wonderful. Can you... Uh, share some of your background for people uh, when you your your some of the work you did when you were in the military. I know you were a sniper, uh, and then also uh, when you went into the private sector a little bit, just to give us a little bit of your background there. Yeah, I went into the Air Force, and after I got out of there, I uh, to make a long story short. Um, I was looking for a job and I seen a posting for a security job and, um, you know, the area 51. And I thought, and, and then really, I didn't know what area 51 was. I didn't. And so I said, I, I went in and applied and I got the job and all. And I worked for a private contractor there. I can't tell you the name of them, but I worked for a private contractor there. And, um, the thing about my job was it was security. And so I was the head of it. And so I had to know every single thing there was to know about it. So if you had the highest top secret clearance there was on the planet, I could still go above that because I had to know about you. I, I was even allowed to interview you to see what I thought. So that's where it all started. Wow. Now, Brother Greg, I know when you say you were in the Air Force, I know that you spent time overseas in the military, uh, and I know it's not a very pleasant experience, but yet you uh, had one of the highest uh, rates uh, as a sniper uh, in in the wars that were going on overseas during that time. Was that during your Air Force time, or was that also during a private contractor part of the work that you did? The, the contractor and it wasn't overseas it was in south america we were fighting drugs drug cartels okay all right that makes more so okay i understand that then um and of course the uh w what when, when you went in there and of course and i and i have in the videos that i've listened to i have seen a lot about even there would be situations to where you could get information that even presidents couldn't get and I do know that that can be very true because I know like Bill Clinton uh, said publicly when he was trying to find out about UFOs and things like that, he said they wouldn't tell him a, a blankety blank anything about what was going on. Uh, so yes, presidents, in the way it was put to me years ago, uh, is that president, there, there's different levels that we have what we call levels one through seven uh, there is believed to be a little bit higher as well, seven through 10, but they don't really go into discussion about that. But a president is actually on a level three. 
Uh, when you get into levels four and five, those are normally what they call the Rothschilds, uh, the Rockefellers, the elite class like that. When you get in from uh, six to seven, they call, I was told that is interdimensional beings that control that spot right there. Right. Uh, that's, called cos that's called cosmic top secret. Wow. That's going on out there. So, but, um, you know, I know that, Brother Greg, you if you can just kind of share a little bit, of, uh, you know, what you, what some of the work that you did, what brought you from, when they first brought you in, how did things kind of migrate into uh, wherever they started you at to the to your first encounter of seeing these demonic entities? I know in some cases we call it reptilians. There's all kinds, as you've mentioned to me, 160 species of uh, of what we would call aliens uh, or or demonic entities is what I call them many times as well. Can you share that with us? Yeah, um, well. Really, it was shocking on for me because it was like the first week I was there, I got to see it. And, of course, you know, I thought it was my mind playing tricks on me or they were playing tricks on me to see what I would do and this and that. And that's how I found out about them. And I tell everybody Area 51 isn't nothing as far as where they park them. <laughs> that's where they park the crafts. And so... At Area 51 itself is mainly just a paperwork center. That's all it is. Now, there's a few experimental aircraft, uh, um, you know, that the military has been designing that they test at Area 51. But S-4, back on the backside of Area 51, is where it all happens. That's where the demonic things are. And all these... Uh, so-called aliens and all this stuff they're 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 not aliens from another star system they're demons right here from the earth they're demonic and i've never talked to anybody in my life and maybe there's somebody i haven't talked to well there is plenty i haven't talked to that ever had a good experience from an abduction they're all demonic and they, they they want our dna so that they can manipulate theirs and try to make themselves look like us and they're among us now. Yes, uh, and you know what kind of was interesting when you say that. Um, my brother-in-law, my wife's brother, he was abducted back when my wife was about I want to say she was about fourteen, between fourteen and sixteen years old. Uh, there was a situation. Uh, when they, of course, my wife is from Eastern Europe. Uh, they were living in Slovakia at the time, and uh, her brother, herself, and uh, her, her brother's son, which was a little boy at the time, they were driving along the road there, and the little boy started screaming, Daddy, 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 and they looked, and he said, look out the window. On the left-hand side of the road, just hovering, my wife said about 100 yards out into an open field was a cigar-shaped type of craft, and her brother pulls the car over, he's a big guy, you know, and uh, pulls the car over and literally started walking across the field. My wife is screaming at him, you know, you know, Alex, don't do that, don't get back, you need to come back. You know, they were scared, the little boy was scared. Finally, the craft leaves, he comes back, but then it wasn't long after that, he would, he, the where he worked at, he would have to leave Brother Greg early in the morning before daylight, walking to work, and he kept noticing this, this guy following him. And he said he was wearing a black, a black, like a black suit or something, but he had a hoodie over the top of it. And Alex said that, the, that this, this, next thing he knew, the guy was not just like a human, and he said he was much bigger than him. Now, Alex, like I said, he's a big man. And Alex is not afraid to, to, to scrap with somebody either. But he said that, um, he said the next thing he knows he sees its face, and he said it's like real whitish looking, and he said he just wasn't human looking. Well, eventually, uh, uh, Alex later told, tells the family that they, they abducted him in the middle of the night, and this has happened many, many times in his life, even back then, uh, and he would try to get my wife to go, you know, tell, tell his family, you know, look, I'm not making this up, and of course, he would, he would come back be bruised all over his body, and uh, he was just terrified of, of these entities. 
So, so in that case there in our family, you know, it's, it's more of a personal note, uh, as well as Brother Gary that has Bear, uh, Bear 49, I think, over, he's in my, on my uh, featured channels, Brother Gary is, his entire family was abducted uh, multiple times. And one thing that he always, Gary always told me that kind of stuck out, Brother uh, Greg, was that he said they would say, you know, we're not going to hurt you. Uh, we are your brothers, uh, but we're very sorry for what we did. You know, and he yeah, always, liars. yeah, he, and he, he, he told me, he said, Steve, he says, that's the fallen angels is what it is. That's the way he put it to me later. That's exactly what it is. He's a smart man. Uh, um, but I really think that the lower class demons are the ones that run the UFOs and stuff. I think the technology and their bosses are the fall, the fallen angels. Because you can, and, and the reason that they're trying to build an army up there is remember that um, one third of the angels fell from heaven. So the devil was already outnumbered two to one when they got here. So he had to do something. And so that he uses the demons to abduct people and extract DNA and try to replicate our DNA. You know, they've got those, uh, you know, even even here we can replicate DNA now. Yes. Um, the police do it all the time. They replicate it many times over in genealogy. A genealogy DNA and so they can replicate it and so they try to replicate it and and then they uh, get these girls that say they've been pregnant their baby's been taken well they're not lying their babies are that's who they can't give birth and I've heard that brother Greg over and over you know through the, uh, the, the one source that I had there in Washington DC uh, he always said, in fact, you and he are, you know, he's had the firsthand experiences as well. And one of the things that he always was very consistent in, just like yourself, was he said there are no good ones. He says, even if you look at the Palladians, he said some people think, oh, the Palladians, they're the good guys. He said, no. He said, that, he said no. even though they're, they fight against the reptilians, he said they'll still cooperate, co co cooperate with the reptilians if the agenda is going to suit them. Uh, and of course, his his one thing that he said to me: the reptilians really outnumber all the other species, and uh, they're the higher, they're the higher. Right, and, and he said, and in fact, uh, he said there was a, a an issue that was brought up not too I don't know how long ago it would have been, but he's he, a little a couple of years ago he told me about this that. Uh, that the Palladians they taken up taken it up before the inter, uh, or the Galactic Council that the reptilians were interfering too much in the human life on Earth and the reptilians made it quite clear uh, you know we're going to take this planet it's ours we're going to take it and if you get in the way we're going to cause you problems elsewhere uh, in places that you have your own people but the other thing too that I'll mention real quick too brother Greg is that he always said to me as well that, like you said, they don't have a, a, a good reproductive system themselves. And so therefore they do rely on kidnapping humans, uh, getting these women pregnant. And like Barry Chamish reported over in Israel, uh, he's a former Israeli journalist, good friend of mine, Barry. Yeah, I know. I remember him. Uh, Barry? Yes, yes. Yeah. He reported the, the seven-foot-tall greys uh, visiting Israel, he was actually part of the investigative uh, team on that. As a journalist, though, he's a journalist. Of course, he's former Israeli military, and uh, and he, and he goes into you know the five instances where women, every one of the women, were 49 years old. Every one of them ended up pregnant. Every one of them, their babies were missing at three months gestation. Uh, and no way to explain where the child went. There was no, there was no uh, abortion. There was no uh, miscarriage. The child was just gone out of their womb. Just gone, yeah. And see, here, here's the thing about that right there. The reason they take it at such a young thing, age is because if there's any flaws in their DNA replication, they can find it early because they haven't got much time. Right. And, and uh, brother, brother uh, Greg, is it true that uh, a lot of uh, I've, I've heard that the 
the fallen angel, I'll use the word aliens, but they say that most of their lifespans run anywhere from 600 to 800 years in the bodies that they have uh, while they're here. Now, I don't know what happens to them after they die, but uh, that's one of the reasons why they say that uh, uh, they don't like dying, for one. But, uh, but secondly, the other thing is, is I was told that the reason we don't see as much interaction between uh, these entities and humans is because our viruses here on Earth are very deadly to them, and vice versa, their viruses that they carry are deadly to humans. Have you heard that before? Well, do you remember the movie War of the Worlds? Yes. What killed him was the cold, the common cold. Right. There you go. There you go. See, so they already knew then. You see how see how this is all working in together? They already knew then. They were warming us up way back then during War of the Worlds. And when Orson Welles did that radio show and all them people committed suicide and everything, that's how afraid people are of it. And that's why the government won't get the full disclosure. But that's not really why. They would like for us to kill ourselves. The government would because there'd be less of us. But they... Um, they withhold information and, and squeeze it out little by little. We had a disclosure. I don't know if I sent it to you or not, the disclosure of UFOs in Congress. Yes. Did you get that? I, I, okay. I did see that. Continue on, brother. So they asked, do you have any aliens? And he goes, well, we got biologics. You know, that's what he was saying. We have them. Do you have crafts? And he paused and he goes, we do. So, and this was an Air Force lieutenant pilot. And let me ask you this, Brother Greg. I mean, I've heard that uh, the Russians, using one of the inventions that Tesla had developed is, is similar to that of a laser. Uh, they're pretty good at knocking them, knocking their craft down out of the sky, especially around the North Pole area. And that is one of the ways that we've reverse engineered a lot of our own technology is from some of the downcraft that we were able to, to, to retrieve that Russia actually shot down, but we got it before Russia did. Have you heard about that before? Well, before that, I haven't heard that, but I know that the reason that the UFO activity picked up now compared to what it was years ago is because our radars actually used to be able to bring them down. Right. I do remember you mentioning that to me as well. And can you kind of... Uh, uh, expound on that a little bit for people so they understand what you mean about that because I know that we ended up making an agreement if I remember right what you told me before with them uh, to, to to kind of get an exchange of technology uh, in return for us telling them how we were knocking their craft out of the air. Right. And what happens is the radar scrambles everything at that time scrambled everything they had. I guess, you know, they're, they're, they're demons, so they, they don't know anything. They know everything and don't know anything. I mean, that's the way I can put it. They, they know they're, good, they're going to hell. They know their time is short. So they know everything and they know nothing. And so I guess they didn't um, uh, plan on us having radar that would be able to knock them out of the sky. And it wasn't meant to be that way. It just happened that way that... Every time we locked radar in them, it knocked them out of the sky. So we've got hundreds and hundreds of, re, uh, of retrieval, uh, retrieved uh, crafts, uh, crafts, UFOs. Right, right. And, and they're, they're, they're calling them UAPs now because UFO has a bad taste in their mouth, see? So they call them unidentified uh unidentified phenomena you know, exactly so. exactly now brother greg when when uh, can you share i i've heard you tell stories before uh about your first encounter with reptilians can you kind of share that a little bit with people when you when that first happened with you yeah um it wasn't um i wasn't thrilled about it then and i'm not thrilled about it now um they, uh, they're very vicious things, and, and they're smart. Uh, they're so smart. Um, and they eat meat. <laughs> and 
and I know this is going to long stretch for most people's minds, but humans are delivered to them. I've heard that and, as well, especially the homeless I mean, I'm are trying captured. I'm to say this without getting myself in trouble. <laughs> no, I understand. Um, they, they do feed them humans. I don't know if you remember, um, uh, what's that actor's name, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper played Meat Train. Yes. The movie Meat Train. Did you see it? I didn't see the movie, no, brother. Okay, at the very end, what they did with the Meat Train was with this guy would go in there and kill him and he would dress people out and at the very end of the movie they show you and they go the train goes into another tunnel and the guy and bradley cooper's standing there and the guy goes you know they were here millions of years before we were and it's reptilians they were feeding them oh my gosh you know one of the things that i heard about that was that the reptilians have such a massive network uh, underground that literally connects continents together and that there is a like the way it was put to me a hive of them for example uh, underneath Los Angeles and that a lot of the homeless that end up going missing uh, are actually on their dinner plate um, yeah and, I believe that that's why they let the homeless there because let me tell you what a reptilian can wreak havoc on a town you anybody They'll kill you. They'll kill you. Yes. Literally. And nobody will ever, you'll just be counted as missing in one of those, you'll be on the ID channel as vanished. And I wondered sometimes, because I watch the ID channel a lot. I like watching crime and, um, you know, trying to figure it out because there's sleuths now. They call us sleuths, people like us that are freelance and try to figure them out. And they really count on us now. But. How many people go missing, do you think, that are abducted or killed by cryptids? Well, I, I don't know how many go, but I do know this. When I worked in law enforcement back many years ago, uh, Friday night, full moon. I mean, I know that sounds uh, pretty weird, but uh, it was nothing for me alone to uh, have calls coming in, three or four missing people. And I'm sure many of them get resolved, but not all of them do. Uh, on especially on a full moon on a Friday night, you know, is that just superstition or whatever? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if there's any significance to it, but it just always seemed to happen that way. And I, and I, and it was so frequent like that that I began to realize it myself as uh, I worked for the sheriff's department, and uh, and I got, I was like, that's just weird. And of course, I didn't think anything about aliens at that time, but uh, but but yeah, very very interesting, especially the things that I know now. Uh, and of course, not all aliens like human human meat, but but we are considered a delicacy. Uh, you know, so I think they all like it. I think they all like it. All of them. I wouldn't doubt it. I would not um, doubt it. I don't know if you've ever heard of the rake. Have you ever heard of the rake? Yes. Yes. The rake is an alien, or, or you know, lack of better words, and it just thirsts on your blood and people get killed and come up missing and here's the thing the police well even the local police know what it is and they won't say nothing and they know what it is i mean there should be a warning don't go out in the woods you know um i think and then this is going to be weird but me and my wife think we've got one back here because we can hear it now and then screeching I yeah. would not doubt it, Brother Greg, because they're, you know, like you said, remote wilderness, and you guys live uh, in a very remote area to begin with, uh, and that that is some of the places. I know that some of the uh, some of the hybrids that our government has been involved in making were released in forests like that, that are beyond bizarre uh, type creatures. There, there, there's creatures that are out there that are just beyond talking about i mean you just you know everybody that sees it's going to see it in a different way you know speaking speaking of the rake and i know we're kind of jumping around a little bit brother greg but but we're just this is our first interview and i'm sure we'll do more still yet yeah, we'll do more but when you when we another thing that you have in your area is what a lot of people call bigfoot or a sasquatch 
And uh, mm -hmm. can you share a little bit of your knowledge of what these type creatures are? I, I do know that we have one in captivity. I've shared with that with people before. Uh, but can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, they're interdimensional. Um, as a matter of fact, on my mountain here, right across the street from me, yes. the animal planet came and did a show on Bigfoot here because we have so many. Wow. And it's against the law to shoot them, but I will, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, but you can't kill something that's already dead. And that's what I try to tell everybody. Why haven't they killed one? Why doesn't people kill these cryptid things that they see? Because they're demons and they're dead already. And so you shooting them is not going to kill them. It's like shooting a ghost. You know, people don't believe in ghosts. And, and, and there are ghosts, but they're demons. Yes. And especially the ghost of a child. Listen, God wouldn't do that to a child. And what happens is these children ghosts draw you in and draw you in and draw you in and draw you in. And then they end up being some horrendous demon in the end. Wow. Mm. And things moving, you know, the, those doll, dolls that, you know, move on their own and stuff. The doll's not possessed. It's a demon standing behind it, twisting its head. You just can't see it. Exactly, exactly. And you know, the, king, the, kingdom of, the kingdom of God is like Jesus said, it's like the air. You can feel it and you know it's there, but you just can't see it. But it's there. And so, you know, these demons, they can hide like that. And we, you, you know they're there, but you just can't see them. And everybody likes to say, well, you know, um, I had a demon in my house and it was doing this and that to the kids and this and that. God will allow them to do that to kids. Exactly. And, and I agree. I believe that 100 percent, brother, you know, that it's just that we're, we're so gullible to believe certain things. And, uh, you know, Brother Greg, how did you when you working with these private contractors, what? brought what was the cause for bringing you in involved with your involvement with these demonic entities that are out there what what actually caused it can you kind of describe to us a little yeah. bit of that situation because as well nobody would, nobody would do it nobody would fill the bill they'd have an ad sometimes for a year and then every now and then some sucker like me from the east coast i happened to be in colorado that day and I read it, and I thought, well, I'm going to go to this. So I flew down there, and, and it's actual, uh, the actual um, interview took place in Dulcie. And so when I was hired on, I was, uh, you know, had a, like five days of orientation, you know, and that was it. You're going to see some things that uh, are, might make you uh, disturbed. Don't worry about it. It's all in control. And it was in control. <laughs> so now, when you when you went in like that, brother Greg, were there other other people they had brought in as well that uh, were part of the program there that were being trained? Well, when I went to orientation, there was only one other person there, and he was from Alaska. <laughs> and did, did he did, now? Of course, you guys are being introduced, like you said, right out of the gate to these extraterrestrial entities. Uh, was he with you as well during those times? And, and, and if so, how did he respond to what he was seeing? How did I respond? Or either one of you, the, the guy that you came in with. How well, long? I, mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't hardly ever see him. He, he might have been in another place there. Okay. But we applied. So, yeah. and the, uh, and, and to Brother Greg, the, when you were at Dulcie, and of course, I've heard some horrifying things about Dulcie. They say that when it's you... It's the worst place there is. Yes. It's the he, closest to hell you'll ever want to be. Exactly. I've heard about where they, this is where they experiment, the, the seventh floor, uh, minus seventh floor, I should say, is where the he, most heinous types of things that are done to the human race uh, I've heard that they've taken, like, for example, you know, attach a human to a horse's body. I've heard they even took in one case. Chimeras. Was, say what, brother? They call them chimeras. Yes. 
And I've heard that they've taken in one case, they took a woman and a man, they'd cut them in half, fused the two sides of the body together. I mean, as crazy as that sounds, I heard that when they did it, they were 80% successful in causing the nervous system to attach. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I could, I mean, so many strange things I've heard about Dulcie uh, that, that is just beyond the, the understanding. And uh, in fact, one, one friend of mine was telling me that, uh, or the guy that I actually was working with, with the people in Washington there said that a friend of his literally had to work down there. And he said, you could, he said he was always terrified when he came out to say a single word about what was going on. He said, because when you go back, he said, the reptilians have a way to scan your brain to know whether or not you said anything to anybody, what you've thought, pretty much any, any kind of crazy thing you could think of. I, I don't know if you've ever heard about anything like that or not. Yeah, they, they do. But you know what? They can only scan a brain that's not filled with the Christ. Amen. They, Amen. They cannot, when you pray, they cannot understand what you're saying. Wow. They can't. They just know that something's coming against them. Just like when you cast out demons, which I, I'm not Catholic or anything, but I will give them credit. At least they're still on top of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned that because I was asked that one day about the Catholic Church because the, the friend of mine that's there in D.C. would tell me, he said, you know, he said, I was very much against the, the Catholic Church. Uh, he said, but one thing he said, this baffled me. He said, is the casting out of devils. He said, because Jesus said, if you're for me, you can't be against me. He said, you know, he says, Satan can't cast out Satan. He said, but Steve, he said, I'm telling you, he said, these guys really know what they're doing. He said, some of them, I don't say all of them do. He said, but some of them really know what they're doing when it comes to casting out these demonic entities. Uh, and he was really troubled by that. And, and I just told him, I said, look, I said, Jesus never put a prerequisite on faith. He just no. simply said, if you can believe, all things are possible. He didn't say, well, and, and, but in the event that you're Catholic or Baptist or Methodist, or whatever, nope, I'm sorry, you guys are all out. No, I said, he never said that. I said, it's based on faith. That. I said, they just believe it. They deal with it. Uh, of course, and I've also heard, too, that the Vatican has got a closer relationship with uh, these alien beings than any other organization in the world. Oh, yeah. Look at Mount Graham. <laughs> so share, share that with us some, brother. Tell us what you know about these things. Um, well... The, the demon, it's a funny thing. They can understand what you're saying, but when you're praying, they don't care what you're saying. They just know something's coming against them, and it tortures them. And I know that the Jews, you're Jewish, I know that the Jews don't eat pork. And the reason they don't eat pork is because God cursed those pigs from that guy and, and made them go and drown themselves. Well, that's why, and this is getting off the subject, maybe a little, that's why these demons don't want to, these demons, they go in and out of the water. They don't come from the land. They have no base here on the land. It's all underwater. And that's where they started their engineering and stuff. I think that when God said he was going to flood the earth, they knew it, you know. It was the people that fought against it, you know, said, oh, you're crazy and this and that. But the demons didn't think so. They knew. And I think that they, when they went underground, see, some of these underground bases weren't built by us. They were already there. Right. So I think that what happened was when uh, Jesus cast them into the water, they hate the abyss. They hate it. But that's where they've got to stay. And that's why these, they call them USOs, you know, underground. All of them go to the ocean. They all go into the lakes and water. All of them. Yeah, Bar none. I've heard that there are huge civilizations uh, in the oceans of these entities. And in fact, recently, 
Uh, I was even told that when, you know, when when the a lot of people think, for example, let me just back up and say it like this, Brother Greg. They say that, oh, there, you know, it's not there's not going to be uh, uh, alien invasion or nothing like that. We're not going to be dealing with that. That's just all made up. It's going to be Blue Beam, Project Blue Beam, and people are only going to be imagining things. And, uh, and, and so I asked about that, and I was told, well, that's an illusion in people's minds because, no, they really are coming, but they're going to be mostly coming from the oceans. They're not going to be coming from outer space. They're going to be coming from the oceans. That's the way it was put to me. And they said that um, the other thing that was brought to my attention, too, was, you know, they said, Steve, you remember the scripture that says, you know, that man's hearts will fail for fear because yeah. of the fearful sights of thinking, things coming up on the earth he said do you have any idea what is in the inner earth you know and said that uh you know we, we they feel like that mostly because of the binary system that is headed in our direction that it causes the cracking in the earth's crust and things and it is allowing uh these creatures so there's there's they said i was told dinosaurs are not extinct they live in the inner earth but they said the dinosaurs nothing compared to some of these creatures said forget the alien forget the demonic entities said there are creatures that are so massive they look like godzilla from one of these old jap uh, chinese movies or something they are they're so massive man the, um, i'm talking about you know 120 foot tall you know godzilla basically 120 foot tall whether they breathe fire or not i don't know but i know that um some of these creatures are so massive and you know they come sometimes as a little tiny orb, but you don't know that son of a gun might be, you know, twenty foot tall. When it, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And I've heard and the so orbs are very dangerous. I've heard that when you see like these little balls of light that uh, that that a lot of people say, "Well, oh, that's an orb." They said that they're very those. He said those orbs. They said they're very religious. They speak telepathically to people said, but if you rub one of those things the wrong way, it'll kill you. Yep, you immediately. People die of heart attacks all the time on these ghost hunts. And it's funny that, you know, that, oh, there's no such thing as aliens and ghosts and blah, blah, blah. But, boy, they're sure looking for them, aren't they? And you know what? Be careful what you look for. You know, don't... What does the Bible say? Don't poke a stick in the hole lest you fall in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, that's exactly what it's talking about. Don't you know? Don't go looking for the living among the dead because they're the dead people are dead. That's it. They're dead. Yes, brother Greg. And, I, I remember one time you mentioned in one of the broadcasts the, the name of Jesus that you guys had to take an. A, a, a swear an allegiance never to mention the name of Jesus. Can you share that about that? Yeah, you, you couldn't you couldn't say it when you were around any of the entities. They said keep your beliefs to yourself. But yet they had Catholic priests go down in there, um, cast them out of some. I guess some of the employees, you know, that got possessed. And um, but if you were to use the name of Jesus around there, even in anger, they would, um, it, it didn't appeal to them. They'd go berserk. You know, that reminds me that you mentioned that there. There was a movie, and I forget the name of it. I've shared it with people before. Uh, they don't, the people don't really understand what the movie is about other than these uh, Marines come back from uh, the Middle East. They're possessed really bad. It's based on a true story. Uh, the Catholic, uh, or the, there's a detective in the story. He later in real life becomes a Catholic priest after seeing uh, this one Catholic priest cast this demon out of this one uh, soldier. And I remember the, uh, the contact that I have in <coughs> Washington. He actually went and met that police officer that became a priest. And he asked him about the movie. He says, how much of this movie would you say is accurate? And what would you say was the most accurate part? He said it's 80% accurate. And he said in that part where you see the demon cast out in the movie, he said that's 100% spot on. He said I was there. He said that's what changed my life. But now what they don't tell you in the movie, though, is why these three soldiers got possessed to begin with. 
And he told me when we went to war in Iraq, he said we didn't go to war because of oil or anything like that. He said we wanted we the body the of museum. Yeah, that. And he said they wanted the body of Nimrod. He said they mm -hmm. knew that Nimrod's body had been discovered. He said uh, 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 Hussein had made the statement that it was. He said, in fact, Hillary Clinton was showing up a lot at the White House during that time. And Bill wasn't even president. This was under Bush's uh, leadership and said that they were discussing getting the body of Nimrod the entire time. Uh, he said, but what happened, he said that when the soldiers went down in that cave where his body was, he said three of those soldiers did come back totally possessed of some kind of evil entity. Uh, and he said, of course, the body of Nimrod they discovered, too, was about seven foot tall uh, and said that he had multiple rows of teeth, just like the what they talk about. The uh, Nephilim. Yes. Nephilim. Yeah, exactly. He said he was definitely a Nephilim, descendant of Nephilim. And it was like the Kandahar giant that we hear uh, like L.A. Marzulli talk about, things like that. Yeah. And uh, and he said that he said initially he said we brought him back. We we put that body underneath the airport in Colorado. And the last that he had heard is that the Israelis had overtaken the project and they're trying to put a soul, a demonic soul back into that body and resurrect it. As crazy as that might sound, that was the last I heard on that. Have you ever heard any well, of that kind of stuff? Here, here's where it's at. It's at CERN, where the CERN Collider is. Okay, okay. That's where they're going to get the demonic entity to put in. That's, uh, I was told that, Brother Greg. I was told that they had actually, when CERN had opened up one of the, uh, the dimensional portals, that there was a demon that was communicating with them, and that demon was saying that he was the spirit of Nimrod, and they're trying to figure out how to get his spirit into that body. And, and and speaking of aliens, I know why well, you get me so inspired just talking to you, brother Greg. So, uh, <laughs> a friend of mine, and I'll just say who it is: Harold, Harold, Harold Villa. Uh, I know Harold. Uh, I lived in Europe, interviewed Harold many, many times. He was invited to work on the CERN project as a scientist, and he said they wanted him so bad to work on that project that they actually introduced him to. To, to aliens and he said he knew immediately they were demonic entities he said and he wouldn't have anything to do with it from that point forward uh but oh, yeah yeah share some things that you know about cern i'd really be curious about that well the CERN. well let me tell you what you know what the original collider was built for the one we had in the 60s i remember original, you telling me one time but go back and let's do it again Originally, the collider was built to collide two atomic particles together, just one particle, so that the explosion from that one particle could determine the yield of an atomic bomb. Um, that's what it was for, so they could determine the yield without exploding one. Okay. So, that, so they would mathematically take the, the energy that came off of those two, ad, two, two particles that hit, and then they found out that sometimes... It opens the door quick. Well, you know, quick's not um, fast enough with demons. They're they're interdimensional. That door's open to crack. Millions of them can come through. And yes. so CERN wants to open up the gate. They want to they want to open up a gateway to hell. And even Stephen Hawking said that who was an atheist. Wow. That they that they he said that. They would not be happy with what comes through there because it wouldn't be good. That is and, so you know, true. Yeah, and he, he, you know, he was an atheist. So the CERN Collider is 27 kilometers in diameter. Now they're building a bigger one. They put extensions on the CERN Collider, and when those when they hit it, you know, uh, when the atomic bomb, I think the atomic bomb started a lot of the demonic activity in the Earth. Uh, opened up the gate because it gets um, over 100, 200, 300 million degrees for 600 billionths of a second to, to ignite the, to make the hydrogen fuse. So that's what CERN's doing. They're doing that on a small scale and getting the same results as if they exploded a big one. Brother... And they, and, 
And when you look at them on a screen, they look like little tiny white dots. That's all you see, those entities, those little tiny white dots in the screen that they look at. Wow. Those are the entities. You know, the I, Lords. I want to ask you if, you if you're familiar with this, Brother Greg. I was told that when we were in Iraq, one of the things that they had discovered uh, out of uh, uh, Hussein, uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, treasure troves was it, it, the way it was put, so it was kind of like, not, not so much a Ouija board, but it's kind of like this, this dial type of object. They said they brought it back and the, you know, the different scientists were trying to figure out what was this thing for? How, how did it work? They spent months and months trying to figure it out and then they realized what it was was that it was like almost like a telephone, but you set the you set these dials yeah. a certain way, right? And it's a golden it's a golden phone that has no seams on it, and the way it came on is they couldn't get it on. They were testing and trying to get it to come on, and the building next door to them was a radio uh, place where they built radios, and a low level radio signal came through and turned it on. I'll be doggone. Well, I heard about that. And then what I was told that they were trying to make the decision because it was like an incoming call, whether or not to answer it or not. Finally, they got permission to answer. They said when they did, it opened like a vortex or something. And this worm like creature about six foot long came through and began to killing the people in the room. Uh, I didn't know if you've ever heard about that one or not. No, I heard what they seen was on the phone. It lit up like a like our cell phones do, where you could see pictures and stuff. Yes. And there was a story. There was pictures of cars and everything that were levitating. And there was uh, a guy in there talking about that Adam and Eve was his their grandfather and grandmother, and oh, that they wow. were sick and tired. So they were sick and tired of going by the laws of Adam and Eve, what they were trying to tell them. And so they decided to pull away. And one thing that really sticks with me is the boy goes, we noticed when we were flying that our flying altitude was getting lower and lower and the foliage was starting to turn brown. Wow. And that, you know, Brother Greg, that brings me to a, a, a subject I've heard you talk about in other videos on. Uh, I've heard a little bit about this from the source that I have in D.C. That, like, for example, the Smithsonian underground, they have many, many uh, things that they'll never make known to the public. But I, I've, I've heard that we have had... We know of, for a fact, we've had five advanced civilizations. Now, that's a little bit hard for, for Christians to hear this, but they say going back 9,000 years, uh, they said the last advanced civilization was 500 years before Jesus came to the earth, and that the civilizations were more advanced than what we are today. We are actually considered the stupidest generation for advancement thus far, but You've talked a lot about some of the technology that was, like you were just mentioning back then. Uh, can you share some of that with us? Yeah. Um, they were more advanced than us, but remember what Jesus said, this, this won't pass until the end of the age? Yes. This is our third earth age. We've been through three earth ages. The worth really is millions of years old. Back in the dinosaurs and all this and that, that was millions of years ago, and that was an age. The earth ended, and that was the end of that age. And then came the second age, and God destroyed it with the flood. Now we're in the third earth age. And I learned that from Chuck Missler. I like Chuck. Uh, I actually did an interview with Chuck years ago. Uh, I miss him, don't you? <laughs> yes, yes. He's a brilliant, brilliant man. Very brilliant. He was the first one I ever heard talk about 11 dimensions. Well, you know, speaking of 11 dimensions, uh, one of the things that, that was shared with me is that we had, of course, more than one hydrant collider. They just don't tell you. Uh, I've heard that there's even one in Antarctica. Uh, now, whether or not we built it or not is a different story, but 
they said that we have we have discovered seven dimensions with the hydrogen collider so far. In three of those dimensions, they're Earth-like, very similar to ours, but they say they're they're operating in a different time period than what we are. It's almost like a parallel universe, different time periods, and that um, uh, what else have I heard about these type? Things? I mean, it's just really bizarre stuff that you hear, and I'm curious to know if you've if you've heard of those type things before. Yeah, I've heard a lot about Antarctica, uh, the Palladians. Uh, live there and the Palladians you know they look white and human and this and that but they're they're demons as well and and it stinks there like sulfur and they do have a collider there and I think that's how they come in and out of dimensions but we haven't learned how to even pull something out of dimension yet let alone go in and out so yeah they they're much more advanced than we are down in there and there are more than one collider. China's building a big one. They're going to build one bigger than CERN. And they're opening up the doorway to hell of what they're doing. They're, uh, they're, going, they're, they're, they're the ones that are going to bring on the, the wrath of the tribulation is these colliders. I really believe that. I can see it, that, Brother Greg, especially in light, you know, when the scripture talks about the kings of the east, you know, the, when we see these scriptures, you know, the, the Euphrates is dried up, etc. To me, that's more metaphoric. And, you know, the, you know, the, the way of the, the Kings of the Beast is, is opened. And I don't look at that as a good thing at all. And, and you know, all these, what is it, uh, however many thousands of horsemen that come up out of, out of these, out of this, you know, for example, you get out of the bottomless pit, things like that. Um, yeah. One thing that I heard was that when Atlantis was a striving civilization, I was told that that we actually have the records. Uh, they're classified, but we have records that Atlantis was taken down because these entities convinced they taught them how to build a hydrogen collider. Oddly enough, and they convinced the Atlanteans to use it, uh, and they ended up opening up a portal which sunk the 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 the, the, the city of Atlantis uh, as a result of that, and. You know, and so you, you hear about all these these strange stories. But one thing, Brother Greg, I want to ask you about this. I have been told over and over and over that Planet X is traveling in the ether. And that's one of the reasons why it's not as easily detected. It kind of goes in and out of our dimension and another dimension. And so I asked the question not long ago. I said, if it's traveling in the ether... Is it that they know when this system comes through, it's affecting our our planets in the in our solar system, but is it a situation where the demons know that the time frame is supposed to be passing and that they will end up using CERN to open up that portal that allows that system to enter into our system and then that's when all this calamity really begins to happen on the earth. Uh, yeah, that's true. And what we're doing right now, you know, your global warming stuff, we're terraforming the earth with these chemtrails and stuff. Yes. We're terraforming it so that the climate suits the demons. Oh, my gosh. I heard that exact same thing, Brother Greg. Exact same thing. They said, why do you think that these uh, entities love the desert? Uh, you know, they, they always love to be in the day. They like these hot, arid places, no trees, no nothing. They said, because that's the kind of climate they want. And that's what I was told. They were terraforming the earth in order to suit their needs, uh, not ours. So uh, can you can you share too, Brother Greg? I know there's a lot of questions about depopulation on the earth is that anything that ever come up in any of the times of the work that you did amongst people? Well, yeah, amongst the Freemasons, you know, rule the Illuminati thinks they can rule the planet by 500,000. But that'll leave the demons with nothing to eat and the giants. So you can't do that. So they're not going to so, let that happen then? No, I don't think so. It's just speculation on my part. That's all it is. Don't take my word for it, speculation. But they are, um, they do want to depopulate the earth. Um, that's why they were so mad about abortion being 
abolished, you know, um, they want to depopulate the earth. And I, I heard, you know, that babies uh, are mixed in food now. Um, oh, that's terrible. You know, I, I just don't know how God can forgive us sometimes. I just don't know. And I don't, and I'm sure that they, well, they did that really even back in Jesus' day when Herod wanted everybody killed, you know, two years and younger. That's the same thing. Um, so it's nothing new. It's just that we're really exploiting it on its highest level here in the United States. And, um, yes. um, it's, know, a, it's always an attack. We're shedding, we're, shedding, we're shedding innocent blood. Right. And it's always it seems to be an attack on the children in every age. Like you, like you said, during the time of Moses, they went after the children, the times of Jesus, they went after the children. Uh, and in modern days, they're doing the exact same thing. It reminds me of the scripture says that time would come where they would take no thought for the child that is in the womb. Um, you know, you know, I, I tell you, Brother Greg, can you, you know, did, other than the reptilians, the Palladians, uh, have you ever uh, seen other types, whether it be the mantis? I hear the mantis are supposed to be some of the most intelligent as far as IQ wise of all the entities that there is. I've seen the mantis. I haven't seen them all. I'm telling you that now. But I've seen the mantis, the grays, the reptilians, and a couple others. I don't even know what you call them. They're just horrendous looking. And they smell so bad. Um, down in Area 51. I don't know. Who was it? Your uncle that worked there? or your My, dad? Step, my stepdad worked at Area 51. He, okay. he When you mentioned you earlier about the aircraft yeah. where they would test some of the latest aircraft that was the one thing that he knew about that he did share with me is that like for example i think when we had the blackbird uh you know he uh, you know i was i was so impressed about that aircraft back in the 70s and he would say to me he said son he said that is such old technology it's not even funny he says we had that long long years ago he said they're just now showing it to the public uh he said that's the way yeah, it is I seen the new B twenty twenty one. Um, I had a friend. I think you can pull it online now. But the new B twenty one, and it looks just like an alien space. Isn't that that is so crazy? And I mean, and it's so perfect. It has no seams on it. It's smooth. It's perfect. It's be it's actually a beautiful aircraft because I was an aircraft mechanic. And I have a, I, I got a fondness for flying machines. I like them. But this plane here was so smooth. There was no seams. And the only thing that I ever seen with no seams was an interdimensional craft. It didn't have seams. Do, is there any reason that you might know of as to why they have to be uh, seamless for being interdimensional? Yeah, so they can move that quick. If, let me tell you what, if you went, now, I read that Navy report, it's, you know, it's declassified now. One of the Naval guys clocked it going 72,000 miles an hour. Whoa. One of them. So if you had a rivet or a seam, it's going to peel back. So they can't do, you can't have that. And, and, and with the, um, energy sources they use from what uh, Bob Lazar talks about um, that they took one apart at, at Area 51 and exploded in a big place in the earth sunk down like they detonated a nuclear bomb underneath. Wow. It just sunk. So, you know, they, they've got, when they crash, I don't know what they do about that. I don't know. I know that there's, they've got retrieval teams and um, that uh, lieutenant in the Navy that, that was in Congress with disclosure said that they have retrieval teams. Right, right. That know how to clean it up. So, you know, they can't get everything. If you went out to, uh, to Roswell with a metal detector, I'm sure you could find a speck or two or something. You can't clean it all. Um, it's just like nuclear weapons when they explode. They can't clean up all the mess. You just can't. You'll die. What? And those things are so radioactive that are under there. Um, 
when you come out, when 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 you're when you've had to be by one, they check you with a Geiger counter when you come out. So, <laughs> brother Greg, what do you, gonna, what what do you know about? We I know we have a a spacecraft. Uh, I say a spacecraft. I've heard it similar to like what a space station would look like as far as that, but it's very long. That is used back and forth in our solar system. Uh, that travels back and forth. I, I believe you actually said to Saturn. <coughs> what do you know about Where? that particular craft? About which what's the name of it? Uh, I was actually told they call it the Enterprise, but it's actually like a kilometer long spacecraft that we use to travel back and forth. Uh, that was built uh, by cooperation between Russia and the United States. Yeah, um, what I think they're doing is they're going to Saturn and not going to Saturn because you can't get in there, but they're watching the poles on Saturn because that's the abyss where the de where the demons are. I was told that is a reptilian uh, safe haven. So it's interesting right. it's that you hexagon say that on the top and the bottom. And it's got a swirling pool in it. And that's where, what CERN hopes to do is be able to be able to produce a beam that can carry an entity back from pointing at it at Saturn, it's North and South Pole. Wow. Now, I, I, whether that'll work or not, you know, that's just what I, you know, you know who Anthony Patch is, don't you? Yes, yes, I do know Anthony. Okay. He knows more about Stern Collider than anybody I've ever met in my life. That guy, you know, he, he went to school at Berkeley. Right. He's brilliant. He really is. He's brilliant. As a matter of fact, when you listen to him, it's almost boring because I can't understand anything about quantum physics like he does. Um, he had, he's, he's a genius. And, you know, he, he figures things out. But, you know, uh, B Berkeley is where they built the quantum computers they they said that they have enough computers in cern that's equivalent to eight billion brains wow you know another thing i heard too brother greg was that places like raytheon and uh other uh you know military contractors they're the really the ones that control all the knowledge that we have on uh aliens aircraft things like that that the government early on chose to use the military industrial complex so that we would have deniability. Uh, so if we're asked about, you know, what do we, what do we know, what do, what do we know about, uh, why, why are we not disclosing UFOs and things like that? Have you heard that as well? Well, you got the MIC, the military industrial complex, and you have the MIEC, the military industrial extraterrestrial complex. So there's two. Uh, military complexes and yes I did hear that I have heard that and you know a lot, a lot of the hearsay you know a lot of people say oh that's just all hearsay well you start to believe it when you see that a lot of the stuff they tell you when you work at a place like that is true <laughs> you know I don't yeah, everybody thinks they're lying to us I don't think they're lying to us I think they're just not saying anything right because from what I see, from what I hear, it's, it's almost like global domination. You know, each country wants to be able to have the edge. And then I've always heard, too, that these entities, these demonic entities, they like to give each nation a little bit to kind of keep them from all shooting each other in the foot, so to speak. Uh, you know, like, for example, I got asked not long ago, you know, about Iran. They said, well, Iran has gotten this new technology from, from the reptilians, but we've not been able to figure out what they actually got. And and you were the very one that actually knew that they had gotten the technology for the cobalt bomb. Yeah, they have a technology for the cobalt bomb. And what it is about the cobalt bomb, my dad used to talk about it when I was a kid. And I, never, and I always stuck me, cobalt, cobalt, cobalt. The cobalt bomb isn't that it's explosive power is so bad. It's radiation. It only takes three of them to radiate the entire Earth. Mm. And that's why nobody will explode it. Now, Iran, they will because they want to wipe everybody off the face of the Earth. And 
you know, what kind of God does that? Right. Wants everybody on the earth wiped off, especially his people. He's the God of Israel. He's our God. He's our God. Our God wouldn't do that. Exactly. Exactly, and, brother. That's right. And, you know, there, there's all these other gods out there. There's so many gods. And I have a friend that was uh, Indian. And he said they have over 5,000 gods. Jeez. You know, yeah. you know, Brother Greg, I don't want to keep you super late, but I, I want to, I would like to go into some things here more spiritually right now regarding these issues here to help the listeners. Uh, and then we're going to come back on this subject again. But one of the things that I feel like we're entering in, you know, we know, we know the scripture says in Second Thessalonians that there's going to come a great falling away before that man of sin be revealed. And I feel like that what, what's happening already is that we're seeing right before our eyes the very same scenario like it was before the flood. We, we, we know that these demonic fallen angels are once again involved in that, which they've been doing it for, for thousands of years anyways, but they're, they're involved in, the, in the, taking this, the, the daughters of, uh, of God, uh, bringing forth children from them, and at the same time, uh, we are seeing more and more of the technology that's being revealed, uh, and more advanced technology, no doubt, is definitely going to come in the not-so-distant future of them basically trying to convince humanity that they're really our, our, our true God. Uh, I know that I was brought in on a, on a project like that uh, one time, or not so much brought in on a project, but I was asked a couple of different biblical issues that was being presented, and, and I, I can't say as to our government, whether the CIA, NSA, or if it was to part of the, the, the military uh, extraterrestrial uh, industrial complex, but they said that there were two entities. One of them claimed to be Ra, the sun god of Egypt, but right. he didn't come. It was his representative, which was actually what they described him to me, the way they said he looked. They said he's got a human type of head, but it's almost like, like skin that flaps down over his nose and over his face to where he breathes underwater, but he can breathe on land. And he was supposedly representing this raw guy. And he said they were so religious and they... They claim that they're the ones that sent Jesus. They sent Muhammad. They sent Buddha, and 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 he said they he said they're talking about that they're coming on the earth in the not so distant future. Twenty twenty six was one year that I was given, and that they're going to come when man is at such a destitute time with disease and famine and war, and that they're going to offer the way back and say that they created us. Uh, we got off track. And, uh, and of course, these, these people that are believers in the government that, are, that were aware of this meeting, they were very perplexed uh, and didn't know how to answer some of the things that these entities were saying. And, uh, and at the same time, they said uh, the one thing that they noticed that the entities had a problem with was how to deal with the cross issue. Uh, and yet at the same time, they want to make it look like that the Jewish people really weren't the ones responsible for, for the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, that they were going to try to twist it in another direction. Uh, so my point is, Brother Greg, we're looking at a very d demonic, diabolical thing that's about to take place with advanced technology that's going to be presented to to. to to tempt and tease mankind, kind of like this TLS movement that's going on. They call it the light system uh, with this guy named Jason. And they're talking about, you know, technology coming forth. And, and uh, but they belittle Jesus from what I hear. I haven't heard that part personally, but they make it look like he was just an ordinary guy that came along. And, you know, but they're talking about healing beds and stuff like that. And Brother Greg, I feel that the people are about to be deceived like they've never been deceived before. And I'm afraid many people are going to be duped by it if they don't real if they're not spiritually prepared. And not only that, you know yourself, Brother Greg, some of the capabilities 
that these entities have. Uh, you know, I think about how the scripture says, you know, Jesus talked about the sword of the spirit. And yeah, the word of God. Yes. And, uh, you know, and and oddly enough, I've even heard that, you know, soldiers that have been in battles with these entities before, that the one thing that would work for them was an actual sword, uh, a knife. They said that for some reason, if they go interdimensional, bullets don't phase them at all. But a sword would give them a, 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 a little bit of an edge. Of course, I was always told, who wants to fight one of these things that is like seven well, to nine foot well, tall well, anyway? Once they're in this dimension, you can kill them. Yes. That's how much time you've got before they switch over into another dimension, then you can. Right, and, and copper, that's what I heard. Copper bullets work too. Okay. Um, it's got to be, can't be copper jacket, it has to be solid copper. And I just wonder, I don't know, but I just wonder if some of the swords back in the day of Jesus weren't made out of copper. Um, Interesting. You know, it, you know, I know that they had the, the guys that, uh, what do you call them guys, um, blacksmiths. Yes. That did you know, steel work, but copper was more available than iron back then. And if you look at um, some of the pictures, of, you know, depictions and stuff they're wearing, they're always wearing copper, copper vests and copper this, because Copper is the only thing that'll save you. And you know, when David and Goliath got into it, and David sunk that into his head, you know why God had him cut his head off, don't you? No. Because they regenerate if you don't, because they're still angels. Wow. They can regenerate. So he had him cut, that's why he had him cut off his head and hold it up. He ain't coming back. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, wow, but, brother. Uh, you go ahead. I, I, I'm going to come back to that in just a minute before we close. But go ahead. Continue on. So there's a lot to that. But the reason the world's in the turmoil that it's in now is because the lack of Jesus. Nobody's casting out demons because That's right. basically probably about everybody's got one. I'm sure that we all have one hanging on and beating on us. You know, I know I do. Um, um I'm not saying demon possessed, but demon oppressed. They're oppressive. Yes, a lot of people they, are, are suffering like that, Brother Greg. I agree right, with they that. They don't have to kill you when they can make you kill yourself. And so they, um, you know, that, but people quit casting out demons. They quit giving God the credit. He's the one who gave us the bread from the earth and made us from the dust of the earth. He's the one that when the Pharisees was there, and called him blasphemous because he was against the law of Moses. He's the one that stood up and said, I am the law of Moses. And so, you know, they don't, they don't care for the widows anymore. They don't, right. we don't care for our soldiers anymore. We don't care about people anymore. You can wake up in the morning and decide to be a girl if you want to be, and they have to recognize it. Um, uh, homosexuality is at an all time high and growing. Um, they're more worried about offending the LGBTQ plus now uh, community. Um, and they also, uh, with child molesters, are trying to protect them. So it's just, that's why the world is the way it is. Yes. Instead of complaining about Biden, pray for him. Instead of complaining about him, pray for him. That's right. He's just a pawn in a game of demonic, war he's a he's a pawn on a he's a pawn on a ouija board is all he is yes. he's a plant sure. and if you put your fingers on it and believe in him that's not going to get you nothing you need to put your hands on the bible and read it and believe in that and it'll get you everything it costs nothing to be born again but it costs everything to be a christian that's right that's so true you know, I think about where Paul said, you know, that we, we've got to have the armor of God on. You know, you got to have the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, you know, the, oh, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. You know, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, the gospel of peace. Of That's right. Yeah. And, and, and it's so true because, you know, brother, you know, whether or not we know what I, I, I'll say this. I have always felt like what, when Paul said these things here, because as you quoted to me before we came on the air, you were quoting that scripture there, 
you know, that, uh, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual uh, wickedness and powers and principalities in high places, right? And, right. you know, we are the people, I'm afraid, Brother Greg, do not realize this is not just some passive situation that's about to happen. You're about to see when they open up these portals using these hydrant colliders, you're going to see another world that you never knew existed. And you really need to know Jesus Christ, not just because you borrowed his name for a little while to say you're a Christian. You need to make sure that you have really become one with him that, that you know, if it's not rude to say, but you have been in the bridal chamber and you have become one together in such a place in Jesus Christ to where nothing can come against you. You know, I mean, I was seeing about today when they did this, uh, this emergency broadcasting test, and I meant to do a video on this before they did it, and I, I just did not get it done before then, but I thought about Psalm 91, where no weapon that can be formed can be used against us. Uh, and of course, the whole chapter goes into all of this. You know, but there again, if people are not truly anchored in Christ, they're going to be defeated. And, and I'm going to come back. I was telling you, I wanted to mention this earlier because you mentioned about the cutting off of the head of Goliath. And I did not know that. But yeah, years ago, I don't know, Brother Greg, I was probably uh, 20 in my mid 20s. Uh, I had this dream. And in the dream, this giant serpent, I mean giant, big enough like you're riding like a horse, he comes, yeah. he flies through the air to attack me. And I had this dagger, like a, like a short sword. No, not, I call it a dagger, not a sword, but maybe about a 18 inch blade on it. And I struck this serpent in the side of its head and wounded it. And then it ran off uh, through the air. And I heard the, the Lord speak to me audibly and he said, be ready, because when he comes back, he will come more vicious than he was before. And sure oh, yeah. enough, he came back the second time, Brother Greg, and I mounted this serpent like I was riding a horse, literally as big as a horse in its, in its diameter. And as I did, the Lord spoke to me and said, you must cut his head off to kill him. And yep. I was whacking away cutting off the head of that serpent and then I came out of the dream and I didn't and I'm yep. like what in the world does that mean that's why you got to cut their heads off when these giants come up from the up from the earth and we'll probably have to do a giants on another time mm. uh, but when the giants come up from the earth and you kill one you better be ready to cut its head off but the best thing to do is stay out of its way and you, you remember uh, the old fable uh, fee fi fo fo might yes. smell the blood of an Englishman. Yes. They can smell the blood of a Christian. Wow. They can't smell, they don't smell the blood of a regular man. They smell the blood of Christians. They're the ones that want to be eliminated first. And God said that I will fulfill my, I will use the giants to fulfill my wrath. Hmm. And so, you know, you can't imagine what it would be like being eaten. It'd be like, you know, jaws, be like a shark getting in. And, Wow. And I know that the ones that I seen were in a form that wasn't too scary, you know, because we had to deal with them and they had to deal with us and they didn't want us too scared, you know. So, but I believe that um, that was all a facade that behind the mask was a ferocious looking monster. And Somewhere, and I, I've tried to look for it today. I'm going to have to look for it again. Somewhere in the Bible it says, and in those days, the mothers will give birth to monsters. Wow. It's in the Bible. Help me find that one. Mm -hmm. I want to, I got to see that myself as well. Brother Greg. Yeah, you're, I, I learned that from Steve Quayle. Can you describe what a reptilian looks like? Like an alligator with legs and arms. I heard that they had a, a head similar to that of what a lizard's head would look like. Is that true? Yeah, some of them do. They, they're different kinds. As a matter of fact, you know what? I watched a movie last night called Cryptid, and it was about 
halfway through it, you don't know what's killing all these people. And then they they call this guy at a museum that knew what he was doing, talking about, you know, he knew ancient language. He said, you're dealing with reptilians that are coming up from the ground. Wow. Hmm. And, and they were killing everybody, horses and people. And they were just, it was, it was really a good movie. I, I, I was like, wow. And I want you to know, have you heard of the series, The Chosen? Yes. I've been watching it. I'm up to season three now. The season four is coming out. And that, and, and they even say that in the very, they got a big, um, thing that comes out there and says, we have not done any changes to what the Bible says. This movie is depicted as accurate as we could get it to the Holy Bible. Yep. I actually started looking at that myself uh, uh, when it first came out a couple of weeks ago. Um, then I've been studying a lot lately, so I haven't seen it in about a week. But that is very, it's, it's nice to see something good versus all the other stuff that's out there. So yes, I, I like that as well. Uh, well, I'm all the way. I'm all the way to where Jesus met the girl at the well, and um, told her everything she ever did. That's so, one of my favorite stories of all in the Bible. Oh yeah, wait till you sing it, man! It'll make you cry your eyes out. Amen, 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 brother Greg. I, I don't want to hold you any longer. I, I want to really thank you though for for coming on with us here um, tonight, no and and I want to encourage you, those of you that are listening tonight. Uh, can't can't stress enough to really be in prayer right now, uh, asking the Father what you need to do, you know, and believe, just really believe. Jesus Christ is the only answer. He's the only way, you know. He's the and, only way out. That's right. And and listen, many of you that are listening tonight probably will not be even Christians. I mean, there are, there are many people here that listen to this broadcast from all over the world, every different walk of life. And I can't encourage you enough um, to, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, please, you know, and, and let's say maybe, and, and I have to, you know, look, you may have a different background. You may, you could be uh, Hindu, you could be Muslim, you could be just atheist. I don't, I don't know, you know, but look, Go, go, listen, God's obligated. If you would sincerely go before him and ask, I don't care what your religious belief is right now, just ask him from your heart. If Jesus Christ truly is a son of God and he, yeah. he came here to die for my sins, I really want to know, Lord, please reveal that to my heart. I guarantee you he'll do it. My cousin, who was an Orthodox a uh, ascetic Jewish man came to Jesus Christ under that exact very thing. He'd been listening to my broadcast, no less, and he, and he just went to praying about it. He says, Lord, he says, if my cousin is really right that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then reveal it to me. And God did. And not only that, his wife, if you've ever seen the movie Goodfellow, the one Jewish yeah. girl in the movie Goodfellow that was married to the Italian family, that's his wife now. He married that girl. You know, I, I, I don't know if her husband died or what happened originally, but uh, and she as well became a believer in Jesus only after the mob was had shot her son, I think for the third time. Her daughter was dying with cancer, and then David had ended up believing Jesus. And then she says to the Lord in prayer one night when her son's laying in intensive care, they said he could not revive. The doctor said he's not going to live. We can't do anything to save his life. Her daughter dying with cancer. And she said, Lord, my husband has just believed that Jesus is the Messiah. If he truly is the Messiah, heal my son, heal my daughter, and I'll serve you. And I tell you, Brother Greg, God healed both of them. And the mob took the hit off of her son, said, if God can raise this boy three times, we're not going to take a fourth judgment on him. And they let him go. And uh, beautiful yeah. testimony of what happened. Listen, there's, there's even, look at, if, I hope there's some people in prison listening to this. Amen. Because I don't care if you murdered somebody or what, Paul was a a Christian murderer. That's right. That's what he did for the Romans. He was a murderer. And God, he didn't go to God. God came to him. That's right. 
And and you don't find God. God finds you. You just got to make yourself available to be found. There you go, brother. And he was on his way to take out a bunch more Christians. He was on his way to Damascus to take out all the believers there. Yeah, he was on his way there. And Paul ended up being (laughs) one of the greatest of all of them. Yes. You know, um, he, he was an amazing man and did some amazing things, but he killed Christians. So, you know, the people in prison, when it says set the captives free, it doesn't mean that because you're in prison that God has to set you free because you have, when you do a crime, you've got to pay the consequences. Yeah. But you still can get forgiveness. The world will never forgive you. They'll never forgive you. And you'll have that weight no matter what. But the way can be lifted off if you'll just come to Christ and tell him that you can't take it anymore. Amen, amen. Brother brother Greg, I can't thank you enough for bringing that up as well for the people. And uh, let's take, we'll pray together. Do you, would you like to pray as well, Brother Greg, for anybody like that? Just simple prayer for people that, because I think that's what's important right now, that just we pray for the people that, that are listening tonight. Okay. You want to start it off? I, I will, brother. I sure will. Heavenly Father, okay. we just thank you, Lord. You are so amazing, dear God. And, and I realize, Father, that we're living in an hour like no other hour that's probably ever been. Maybe, maybe there has been worse. I don't know, Father, but it's about to get really ugly. And Lord Jesus, we here asking you father to remember your people you said all that the father has given me they'll come to me and not one of them will be left out and like brother greg said even it doesn't matter if you're in prison what you did you know he's merciful he's there to forgive and i love the way he said it father he said the world might not forgive you but jesus he's the one that can really understand he knows why yeah. it happened, what happened, yeah. all about it. And so we yeah. just we, we pray for the people, Father, that they would truly find you, that you'll find them, Lord. They'll answer that call. As Brother Greg said, he's, he's looking for you. It ain't you looking for him. He's looking for you. You just need to heed that call. So I, I pray for you in Jesus Christ's name. And Brother Greg, if you can pray as well, my brother. Yeah. Lord, let's bring all the people, your people. You're the God of Israel the law of Moses, and you took us up out from under the law, and so you're our God. Amen. You are our God. And I ask that we get back to um, helping the widows, freeing the children from slavery and pornography and all the things that are going on. I know you got to be up there saying this is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah because I believe it is. I believe it's as bad as it can, just about. It can't, it's going to get worse, but it's bad enough to please, Lord, most of all, more than anything, I pray for the children because they're faced with a difficult task ahead with the way things are. And I pray that, you know, the people in prison who come to you, get that weight off you guys and girls that are in jail and prison. Get that weight off of you because the only way you're going to get forgiven is through Christ the, because the world will never, ever, ever forgive you. They may say they do, but you go walking down the street again in the town that you did it in and see how much forgiveness you got. So yes. I just pray that, um, you know, that the people would just get back to back to business with you and um you know healing and casting out demons and healing the sick we don't see that anymore except if it's fake so i pray lord that people would just get back to business with you and and thank you lord for everything you've done for me and Amen. that you're going to do and, do and for ben i mean for um uh steve and i just I don't words. I can't even put it in the words how bad I just want to, you know, say we're sorry about the abortion. It's so bad. Yes. I just don't even have words. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Brother Greg, is there any way that people can support support what you do as far as I, I, I've not ever asked you this before, but I just wanted to ask you now. Is there a way that people can help support your family? Yeah, um, I'm in need of a car. My, a friend of mine borrowed my only truck I had and totaled it. So I'm really stuck up here unless I can find a ride. Amen. And, and, and yeah, how, could, how could they donate to you? Is, it, is there an address we could put in the description for them? Sure, it's the 325 Angora Drive, Bostick, North Carolina, 28018. And okay. I really do need help. I mean, there's others that need more help than me, but I'm, I'm asking, you know. Amen. 325 Angora Drive. Is that A-N-G-O-R? Yeah, O-R-A. Okay, Angora Drive. And, and what part of North Carolina is that? Bostic, B-O-S-T-I-C. And the zip code, brother? 28018. All right. I'll post that also, guys, in the description for you. God lays that upon your heart. You'd like to be able to help Brother Greg out and his family. Uh, Sister Peggy, we certainly thank you for that. And Brother Greg, we thank you for your time being here with us tonight. Yeah, I'll be out again, I'm sure. Amen. You definitely will. We, we'll be glad to have you back and before too long get you back here to share more of this amazing knowledge that you have. Uh, and yeah, and I really appreciate you putting Christ in this as well. Oh, yeah. There's no other way I'd do it. And um, we'll, we'll get into talking about the Giants next time. That sounds good. We will go into the Giants next time. Anyway, thank you guys. Thank you for listening tonight here on Israeli News Live. God bless you. And again, the, in the description there, you'll be able to find Brother Greg's uh, uh, mailing address there. If God lays upon your heart to help out his family, we thank you for that. And good evening.